In this corner, we've got the new lightweight MacBook Air with the Apple Silicon M1 chip. And in this corner, weighing 850 pounds, guns and... Axel. <laughs> Axel. You're a good boy. Yeah. MacBook Pro. Pretty heavy. I don't usually do .NET tutorials here and I've never done one before, but why am I doing this now? This is actually a backend that I secretly use. Well, maybe not so secretly. I love using .NET as the backend for my mobile applications and to build web applications on. There, I've admitted it. So .NET 5 just came out and what better way to test it than to see how it works on the MacBook Pro versus the new M1. I'm gonna be doing some performance tests, not really super scientific, but just to give you an idea of what the speeds are gonna be like with a 64 gigabyte i9 processor, this monster MacBook Pro from 2019, the 16 inch version, versus just the wimpy little MacBook Air, which I have right here, and just 16 gigs of RAM with the M1 chip. I'm really curious to find out. I haven't done the test yet, you will see it as well as I will, who is going to win. Maybe there won't be a winner. So let's start things off by installing the .NET SDK. I don't have it installed on either one of these machines yet. So let's start off from the beginning. Here is .NET.Microsoft.com slash download. And I'm gonna grab this .NET SDK right here. Now this will give me the CLI. So I'll be able to execute .NET commands, build projects, right from the command line. Let's go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the MacBook Air as well. You can always search for .NET download on Google, which is what I did here. Let's grab that download SDK and I'm gonna install it on both of these. The installation is just uh, pretty simple. It's using a PKG, which just requires a double click and following some prompts. Now let's pop open the terminal on both of these and we're gonna do the .NET command. So .NET dash dash version, it's installed 5.0.101 .NET dash dash version. Okay, so far so good. No winner yet. I'm gonna go to my code directory and make a directory for .NET. Same thing here and go into that directory. Now we're ready to kick things off. So there is a couple of other things that I like to do for my .NET development environment. Now I usually use Visual Studio on a Windows running in an emulator. I use Parallels right now. I used to use VMware Fusion, but Parallels seems to be a little bit better these days. But right now, neither of them are gonna work on the new M1 chip. So we're gonna be using Visual Studio Code, which is also a really nice option since it has the C Sharp extension, which works beautifully. I'm gonna show you to you right now and how the whole process works. So we're gonna create a brand new project, .NET new, and let's call this one console. It's just gonna create a console application so that we can easily test things. All right, you know what? I'm gonna do that over because I actually wanna test the speed of the creation process as well. So I'm gonna clear things out. Okay, let's set this up properly. I'm gonna create a brand new project, so .NET new console, which is just gonna create a brand new console application. I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'm gonna hit enter at the same time so we see which one finishes faster. Now I know that creating an application isn't really something that we all care about, but still I'm really curious to see who wins. MacBook Pro is the clear winner on that one. It created the project much faster. Okay, fine. Let's open this up in Visual Studio Code. And here's our project. We have a .NET CS project and a program.cs. I'm gonna pop open VS Code here as well. Now, if you are interested in my video about VS Code and testing VS Code performance on these machines, check out that video. I'll link to it up here somewhere as well. And I'll link to it down below. Now I am running the regular version of VS Code that is being translated by Rosetta 2 right now. I also have the Insiders build there. If I get strange performance issues with the M1 while testing this, I'm gonna also try this on the Insiders build just to make sure it's nothing having to do with their translation layer. Now I also like to install the C Sharp extension. So I'm gonna go to extensions here, search for C Sharp, and there it is right there. I'm gonna install that one. 
and uh, Visual Studio Dark, that's fine. Now, VS Code is also telling me that required assets to build and debug are missing from .NET. Should you add them? And I think, yes, you should click yes on that one because what it's gonna do is give you something really, really interesting. So if we take a look at the file system now, you'll see that we have a new VS Code folder in there. And the VS Code folder has launch configurations as well as tasks that you can actually run and trigger from the command line. And this will tie into the debugger in Visual Studio Code. So you'll be able to trigger your debugging and attach the processes right from this tab right here in VS Code. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna go to my extensions and search for C Sharp and install that one. And I can select the dark theme. It's fine. Here it's also asking me, do I wanna install the missing assets? And I wanna say yes here. Okay, so let's check out our really simple program here that prints out hello world. How do I run this? Two ways. One, a simple way is go to the terminal tab and right inside your program folder, you can issue the command .NET run. I'm gonna do the same thing here and then hit the enter key at the same time so they run at the same time. We should be all set and ready to do this test right now. I'm gonna hit enter at the same time here to see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. Ooh, the MacBook Pro is a clear winner here. Hmm. I wonder if I run it one more time if I get the same results because there's probably some compilation that got saved. MacBook Pro. It really is winning in this case. Wow. By the way, the MacBook Air, I've been doing a lot of testing on this. I've installed Xcode, Android Studio, I've ran simulators, and I have not yet even plugged in the charger. It's still on the battery the way I took it out of the box and it hasn't died yet. It is pretty close to dying and I wonder if that has anything to do with my test. Maybe there's some throttling going on, I don't know. Maybe this has to do with the version of Visual Studio Code I'm running, but I doubt that. Maybe .NET is running through an emulation stage with Rosetta. If you know the answers to these questions, I'm just doing the tests here. If you know the answers to these questions, then please let me know down below and everybody else can benefit as well. Now, I am curious to run this test on the new v VS Code Exploration Edition. So this is the insider's build that's actually built for the new ARM processors. Let's try that out. I'm gonna open this up. There's our .NET folder. Let's open up the terminal, control backtick, and run .NET run. Let's do the same thing here again. One, two, three. Okay, so clearly it's not the editor's fault. Something's going on with the .NET runtime. It runs fine, but it is a little bit slower on the M1 processor versus the MacBook Pro powerhouse i9 it's probably optimized for this now if you go to github.com slash dot net performance and then take a look at their docs section you'll see that they have a profiling workflow document so this is a pretty interesting tool and resource that you can use to test and profile your .NET code. And what I'm gonna do is actually borrow some of this to change some of the code here and run a more longer sample. So for example, right here we have something having to do with date time and ticks. I am curious to see of the memory usage and the CPU usage. So what I'm gonna do is actually, let's see, uh, this project settings right here are going to prevent jitting so it's going to avoid needing the warm-up part i'm going to go ahead and replace the existing dotnet cs proj settings with the one i copied from that repository let's save that let's see if this is any faster mm, doesn't look like it not sure that that actually does anything in my case this actually tells you how to do some performance testing within visual studio proper the actual full visual studio we don't have the capability to do that now maybe they'll add some documentation on how to do this using the command line now there is an interesting test right here the allocation tracking test so i'm going to copy this program right here and paste that into our code this whole class and What's really cool about the c -sharp extension and the .NET SDK that I installed is that it provides IntelliSense and automatic imports. Well, it did that in regular Visual Studio Code. 
So let's do that there. So Visual Studio Insiders is not doing that for me, but regular Visual Studio code is it's underlying the missing references and offering me to automatically import these for me, which is nice. Let's do that. And there's my using statements. So what this will do is this will consume a little bit more memory. And I'm going to increase this actually to let's make it uh, 10 million iterations. And once it's done, I'm going to say console dot right line all done. So this will use the cryptography namespace and therefore it'll allocate some more memory for running this application and this should take a few seconds to run now just so that we're on the same page with the macbook pro i'm going to do the same thing here so we're not cheating i'm going to change the project to have those settings we're avoiding jitting the project and i'm going to copy that code to run as well the crypto code right here for our program all right finally the test .NET run here and .NET run over there. Ready for this? Going to hit enter. Let's see who finishes first. Wow. Oh, you're going to say, Alex, that was pretty silly because this one only did 100,000 iterations, whereas that one still has to do a few more million. Let's change that up. Make sure they're on the same page and they're both going to do 10 million iterations. Let's do it. One, two, three. All right, who's gonna win? Let's see, come on, come on, come on. Oh, MacBook Pro finished, and then that one finished. MacBook Pro is clearly the winner here, at least in today's test. All right, there's one more thing we need to do, and that's to take a look at the CPU usage and the memory usage through the activity monitor. So let's run this, but first, what I'm gonna do is change this to 100 million iterations on each one of these. 100 million, that should take a good minute or so to run. Let's activate .NET run one more time. At the same time, boom, they're both running. Okay, let's take a look at the activity monitor. Here it is. Ah, this is very interesting, check this out. So .NET on the M1, this is on the M1 machine right here. .NET is showing up, CPU usage 98%. Architecture is listed as Intel. So this tells me that this is not optimized for the M1 chip yet. I'm sure it'll be faster when it is, but right now it's running through a translation layer, which is Rosetta. So there it is, it's running through Rosetta. We also have another .NET process down here, but the top one is 98.3 and the memory usage on .NET is 160. Now mono, I believe that allows C sharp language to run on a Mac. So that's also taking up quite a bit of memory right there. Let's take a look at this one, which is the MacBook Pro. .NET is taking up 100.1 CPU. Now it's 99.9. .9. Threads seven memory. Okay, so over here it's not taking up that much memory. Where is it even? Is it on here? Am I missing it? There it is, not much memory at all. The big one is mono, so it's 214 here, and it's taking up 374 megabytes on the MacBook Air. So there you go. Take it or leave it. They both finished. After this one's done, I just want to print out console.writeline, console.writeline, all done. MBP. We're going to do this one more time just to see who is going to win this one with 100,000 iterations. Go. Did I say 100,000? I meant 100 million. Ooh, I got the low battery warning on the MacBook Air. It's about time. Is it gonna finish before it dies? Is anything happening? Hello? Ah! <laughs> All right, there you have it, folks. MacBook Pro wins the .NET game for now on all levels of my testing. Now, perhaps my testing is not scientific enough. If there is specific tests you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, for now, the winner is the 2019 MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna test this out on a Mac Mini as well to see if that changes anything, but I doubt it because of that Rosetta translation layer that's happening there on the new M1 processors. So if you like this kind of content, if you like this video, if it was informative, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel 
you'd really help me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.